Hey, what's going on? Are you looking for a controller for the Adobe Creative Cloud suite of programs? Well, I have one of the most customizable, powerful, and let's face it, coolest solutions right here. And I'm gonna tell you all about it right Hey, what's going on? Kyle here, helping you level up your photo, video, and music. Like I said, the Palette Gear Kit is one of the most customizable and powerful controllers for Adobe Creative Cloud programs. There is a specific integration built perfectly for those programs, and depending on what kit you get, there's already like set pages and controls right out of the box. I'll show you one of my workflows with Lightroom or Photoshop, but I wanna do an unboxing first because I'm really, really excited to open up this kit and see what it looks like. Here we go. Open up, there we go. Okay, so here is the Palette Gear Expert Kit. Expert Kit right here means it comes with one, two, three knobby controls, two arcade button style controls, and two fader slider controls and of course the uh, command hub right here. When you open up the box, you have a little quick start guide. Okay, so this tells you exactly where to go to download the application to set up the controller. And that's about it. Boop. We got our USB, two stickers so you can let people know just how freaking cool you are. Here is the command hub. This is the one that has the uh, USB port on top. It has a little sticker here thing. Oh, that feels so nice. Bam, oh, so pristine. So what I'm gonna call the little command hub, the one that you actually plug into the, the computer, it has a little LCD screen that will tell you, you know, what command, what, what profile you're using because whatever given program you're using at that time, you can still have multiple profiles of controls. So if you're in Photoshop, you can have one profile for say uh, dodging and burning and another profile for your, for say for frequency separation or just wh whatever it is that you're doing nifty in its own right, even beyond the fact that this is the one that you actually plug into your computer. I'm gonna look up the manual and figure out exactly what they call this darn thing. So that is, that. Let's start taking out some of our other tiles. Once again, with the expert kit, you get three dials, and these dials are actually pretty interesting in and of themselves. You can control how sensitive this is, and there's actually two levels of sensitivity. One is just you turning, and the other one is an actual push and turn. So depending on if you're gonna make coarse adjustments or very, very fine adjustments. You can have, you know, the regular turning of the knob be your fine adjustments. And then when you wanna make coarse adjustments, you can do the push and turn. So that is the dial. And there are neodymium, neodymium, neodymium mag magnets. Uh, don't quote me on the pronunciation of that. Inside each one of these, and you can see it's pretty strong. Definitely wouldn't exactly want to carry it around like this, but the point being is inside of whatever desk uh, workstation you're using, you can move these things around. One, to be ergonomically helpful in your workspace, and two, obviously, to put the commands and the controls exactly where you want them. So let's just attach those like that. One, two arcade style buttons and two faders, whatever you wanna call it. I was a DJ for a while, so I like to call them faders. So the arcade style buttons, really, really cool. I mean, this is basically, if you've ever gone to an arcade, I'm an 80s baby, so uh, going to an arcade was something I did when I was a kid. And these buttons just give you a very, very tactile, that, that, that sound is, is very nostalgic for me. Let me see if I can put this up to my microphone. Click, click, click. And then our two faders. I think this is a really interesting 
controller for some of the Adobe programs. Online, I've seen them used in examples as exposure controls, things like that, color controls, color temperature controls inside Lightroom or Photoshop. And the interesting thing that you can do is you can have it be this dial, this, this whole area, this whole range be a different area of the spectrum. So it's, let's say for contrast, uh, depending on you, you might add a lot of contrast normally in your visual style, or if you're like me, I kind of crunch down the contrast a little bit, so you can have this range be a different range depending on your, you know, your, your eye. All the way over here can be negative 50 contrast for me, because I'm more prone to, to crunch it down, and over here be positive 10, positive 20 so that I have finer control and kind of, you know, it's in my window that I like to play in. So let's look at how these things fit together. In this little book, there is a very important thing because you can't just put these together and call it a day. You actually have to make sure that something is happening and that is right here. There's basically little nodes that have to go and daisy chain across all the different things. So. Let's take a peek at what that looks like. So right here, you can see prongs on this side and their contacts on this side. I'm gonna design my palette kind of configuration around my keyboard slash Wacom tablet. So I think something that I wanna do is have it be on this side of my keyboard. I kinda want to have them like so. We have two faders. Up and down, let's see. I think for these two kind of things right here, I'm gonna be switching to and from tools. So I want them to be kind of right here at the bottom of everything. One, two. Typing, typing, typing. Drawing, drawing, drawing. Dial, dial, dial. Undo, 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 cut, 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 cut. Exposure up, exposure up, contrast down. Another quick thing I wanna point out is the texture at the bottom of these. There's this nice rubber feel, a little logo thing on the bottom, but it really stays put. You can see if I'm just kind of tapping it, it really doesn't wanna move, and if there's any downward pressure, this thing doesn't move at all. You can kind of tell what this is all about. You have these physical controls that are able to get your fingers off of the keyboard and basically into the program. This is a really great way to do that. But let's face facts. This right here is not completely necessary. Sure, it's gonna kinda cut some time out of my workflow. The fact of the matter is that this thing is just so freaking cool. I mean, just look at it. And the fact that depending on what you're doing, this thing can evolve with you. There are some really in-depth controllers for Adobe programs. Well, any kind of creative program is gonna have some of the accompanying really, really expensive equipment. $300 for this set. There's another set for $200 and a third set for $500. And basically the difference is how many of each thing they come with. And let's just say you don't need the faders. That's not gonna be something that's gonna work for you in the workflow for the program if you only use, say, Premiere, I feel like, I don't know what I would use these faders for yet in Premiere. I know what I'd use them for in Lightroom and Photoshop, but maybe you know you mainly need these buttons. Well, depending on what kit you get, you're gonna get a certain set of buttons and dials and faders. But you can buy all of these separately. I believe each one of these modules is $50, so you, know, you can get the smaller set and then augment that with more but you're obviously gonna save money if you buy them in the set. <laughs> okay, I haven't even plugged it into my computer. Broken, dead on arrival. Warranty, no good for being clumsy. So now that we know what's in the box, let's actually plug this thing into the computer and see what we're working with. So I went to the website on the little pamphlet, downloaded the software, installed it, opened up Photoshop. Now let's spin up that program here. So select previous next layer, brush hardness, razor, See, we have some of the quick start guides here. You can see it, it recognizes I have the expert kit. I'm sure I can scroll down and see starter kit. Professional kit is the name for like the big honking one for $500. Dodge and burn, here we go. 
So this is called dodge and burn. We got brush, roundness, angle, size, DB mode, selection. This is a picture of me and it's on a wide angle lens that makes my nose look so big. Ooh, so you can see here on the left hand side or the right hand side of the screen. Oh, let's I can move it to be the top. So as you hit the different buttons, it's hitting the controls. And right now this is sat cycling through. So highlights, midtones, shadows. So if I switch over to the burn tool, shadows, highlights, midtones. It's hit this one here. So brush angle. Brush, ooh, brush roundness. Now let's try pushing it down, making some, yes, yeah, so you can see it makes much coarser adjustments as I push it down. So you can see pretty clearly as I go in here, if I want to, I'm not gonna be very, uh, I'm not gonna try, I'm not gonna try too hard here, I just wanna kinda demonstrate. Let's just say I'm dodging and burning my face. Let's go ahead, switch that hardness to 30-ish percent. Change this size a little bit smaller. And let's make sure, let's just do midtones right now. And of course, now this is dodge, so now I actually hit the wrong thing. Get this little bit on my my head, down here, on my nose, this side of my face that the sun is on. Now let's switch over to my burn. Let's switch over to my burn layer. Let's definitely make that brush size a little bit smaller. I hit the course adjustment. Bam. Maybe a little bit smaller. Let's make my hardness a little bit harder. Start hitting some of this little hair right there. So without you actually watching me retouch this darn picture, you kind of see how I'm able to control what's going on in here. And now let's actually go into, let's go back into the program and see what kind of controls we can configure here. Let's say this is a good little starting off point, but I don't really want uh, the brush angle. That's not one that I, use a lot so I can look here. So we have basic brush, brush shape, airbrush, bristle brush. Oh my gosh, look at this. Look at all these controls that I can do. And again, this is specifically for a dial flow. Let's use flow in this example. I can go advanced and you can see the sensitivity and the range. So all the way down will be zero and all the way up will be a hundred. For the sake of an example here, let's switch that to Let's say I wanna be able to make really, really fine adjustments. I can switch this to be between, let's call it one and 50, because I, I, I don't wanna go overboard with my dodge and burn. And you can see bottom is zero and all the way at the top, it won't go above 50. And let's also change the color of it. Let's go, this will be green. That one will be green and now you can see green on the actual on the actual device. Now let's take a little bit of a peek at Lightroom. Now I have Lightroom open uh, with just kind of some pictures that I took on a little trip last week. That's what we've been looking at. Let's go back into the palette app and go into Lightroom. Let's say I want to do something for sorting. Let's photo retouching, culling. Okay, culling. I already really like the out of the box setup for culling. So let's just say, obviously this is on, on a specific import. I've already culled, these are, the, these are the pictures that I culled. But let's say, take a peek at exactly what's gonna happen here. So, okay. Yes, we have the thumbnail size. Change, what is this? Change rating. Okay, so it's not exactly, so it's, pretty, you have to turn this one quite a bit to be able to get it. So let's go back, let's kind of do a live little test here, change rating, sensitivity, medium, okay. 
back into Lightroom. Okay, so now you can see I don't have to turn the dial quite as much to change the rating. You can see here the stars right there. Boop, 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 boop. Down, down, down. Up, 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 up. Do, 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 do. Down, 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 down. Wonderful. Okay, white balance temperature. So you can kind of, I can imagine if you just want to take a peek, I, I lean towards cooler colors. So right now this bottom being 2000 and the top being 50,000, that's a little bit big. So just really quickly, I can change my color temp. Let's go to something neutral. It's okay. So right now top is 100, bottom is negative 100. So right in the center. Let's just stick it and keep it at zero. What's this one do? Okay, so that one flagged it as a reject and moved on to the next picture. Let's open this up. So let's just say I was going through them and I wanted to just slap buttons I'm looking at this one, this one's a no, boom. Hit that no, this one's a yes, boom. And now as I go through, you can see this one is flagged as yes, this one is flagged as no, and it moves on to the next one. So Eve, this is just like one of the most basic things, but to me, it's really nice. <laughs> it's, I can, I'll be able to just go there and just kind of like finger smash the buttons as I go down. Okay, I like that picture. Let's go ahead and hit that one as a yes. I definitely like that picture. That one's a yes. So I'm a little bit of a gearhead. I love these little kinds of gadgets and stuff. When I was a DJ, I had something that was very similar to this, controlling a program called Traptor. And it had basically, it was all arcade style buttons and a couple of faders and a couple of dials. And it was all in one thing, and man, I, could I do some interesting stuff with that? I freaking love that controller. And this is kind of bringing me back to that. Oh no. It's really bugging me that I can't make that in a perfect square. I'm sure there's a way I can make it a perfect square. Come on, B. Okay, so I can't make it a perfect square and that's really bugging me. I'm gonna have to buy a couple of these so I can make it a rectangle. Uh, point being is, while I don't think it's gonna save tons and tons of time, I think ergonomically, it's gonna be much more comfortable to use these over long sessions, not necessarily with, say, you know, culling photos like in, in the example I showed, but as but using this for Adobe Premiere on seven hour long days of editing, this is probably gonna make things a little bit more comfortable for me. So after that little kind of show and tell on what this is and what it can do and the programs that it can control, I think I wanna get like 40 hours worth of use time on this before I do a full review. I just kinda of wanted to show what this was because I didn't even know it existed when I found it. When I found it, I fell in love with it immediately. It made me think of that little DJ controller that I mentioned before. And when I did a little bit more research and saw some people actually using it and see how powerful the integrations are with the Adobe programs, and there are some other programs that this thing can control. I didn't show those. I think that this is going to be super, super interesting for anyone that's doing a lot of work in the Adobe Creative Cloud suite of programs. I use Adobe Premiere the most, followed by Lightroom, Photoshop, a little bit of After Effects, and of course I do some kind of general audio editing in Audition. So I'm all in on Adobe. I do all of my projects for both my day job and my personal kind of creative projects in Adobe programs. And the fact that this thing has such powerful integrations really, really sold me on it. If you like this overview video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, do the other one, but let me know why in the comment section down below. I won't cry too hard. Anyway, be sure to click the subscribe button so that you can be notified when I finally do release my full review on this once again, after I get some more hours of use. And if you are a YouTuber in the future, check the description down below for the link for the full video. Also, maybe in the corners of the screen or whatever. Thanks again for watching this video, and until next time, cheers.